Hey guys, today I want to show you a video about two of my favorite functions from the Lodash library called get and set. Now for those of you who are not familiar with Lodash, Lodash is an open source project that consists of a ton of utility functions that makes it easier for you to manipulate arrays, numbers, objects, or strings. So it's a library that's been used by millions of people in the world. And I can tell you now, if you go to any side, like big size or any size project on GitHub with JavaScript, you'll most likely see Lodash as part of the requirements. So if you don't know what it is, I suggest you go to lodash.com and get the library. And today I want to show you two of the functions that I use almost daily. And uh, it's one of my favorite, two of my favorite functions. So they're called get and set. So in order to show you the power of these two functions, I want to show you how they work and where you might want to use it in, um, you know, in specific situations. So let's start a simple project here called Lodash get and set. Here I have an empty Node.js project and we're just going to install the Lodash get and set functions. So here's how you do it npm install save lodash.get is I get the get function and if you do npm save lodash.set I'll have the set function now the great thing about lodash is that instead of like a giant library with hundreds of functions in there it has this modular architecture where you can import only the function that you need so if I only going to use set or get in my project I don't need to import the whole library I'm just going to import this specific function. So let's get started. Let's create an index.js. And the first function I want to show you, it's called lodash get. Now, where will you, what might be a situation where you want to use get instead of uh, the regular way of how you might do it. So let's say we have an object here called user. And this user has some nested properties. So as you can see from the top level, you have user you have name location and then occupation is a sub property and it has you know a strings here and then this one's an array so it's a nested object pretty simple so let's say if i want to if i want to ask you to um let me let me add an extra thing here let's do java okay Let's say I want to add, I want to access the third item of skill sets array. How would you do it? Now the way you would usually do it is you know you do const user skill equal user dot occupation dot skill sets sub two. Now this should return you user skill, right? This should, should return you um, Java as the answer. So if we run it, you see it says Java. So this is uh, very easy. Now, let's say this data comes from an API endpoint and for another user, maybe user number two, they may not have this second value, this, th sorry, this third array value. This, this other person may only know one thing. So their skill set array may look like this. So when this happens and you try to access that value that does not exist, Node.js will throw an error, right? So if I if I do, um, let's say I got a skill, use a skill, and for whatever reason I want to do like a split on it, right? And then split it by you know space or something. So if I do this and then try to run it, I'm gonna get an error here because like JavaScript does not understand what this is because this is empty, it's undefined. It's no. So now this happens on the either if it happens on the server side or on the client side, your whole application might crash. So it's no good to do this. What 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 would you usually do is to have some sort of you know check use like um like a error checking, right? So in in case like these values do not exist, you can do something like like user skill, you give it a default value of empty. So you can do if user dot occupation exists and user dot occupation 
dot skill sets exist and user dot occupation dot skill sets sub two. Let's say you know you expect this have to have uh, this array to have a value of at least three, right? Then you set the user dot occupation. Sorry, uh, user skill equals you know this whole thing like only if it exists so you put it in the if loop so it won't error out so if you do this see it returns that so it because none of this get executed because this value does not exist so you could perfectly do that in javascript or in your code and to have error checking and this will this works fine you know so i want to show you now how you can use low dash get to make this code a lot simpler so first we have to bring in the gets library require low dash dot get so now we have the get function now let's see instead of writing all of this stuff here we can make it a lot simpler let's try it so we can do const user skill equals Let's call it the get function. Now, load dash get accepts three parameters. The first one is the actual object you want to manipulate. So, in our case, it's the user object. And the second parameter is a string of how you would actually access the value that you want. So, for us, we want user dot occupation dot skill sets and then sub two, right? Let's say this is the how we access how we want the data, and now the the third parameter is a default value in case when this value does not exist. It will just set user skill to an empty string if this does not exist. So if I do this, and then I log this out, I get the same results. So that whole thing earlier, we, it can be written with one line with low dash. So instead of doing all of this junk here, you don't have to do it at all. You just do this. And there you go. I hope, like, Lodash will base if this does not exist, Lodash will not throw any errors, will not crash your site with, with your application. It will simply goes back to the default value. And if you don't put a default value here, the value of user skill will become undefined. So I usually like to put a default value on the third parameter. So this is it. This is the power of Lodash get. Now the next thing I want to show you is it's called lodash.set. Now you just replace these two words with set and now you have the lodash set library. Lodash set library does similar to what gets does except it sets the value of whatever you pass in. So let's say I want to set a skill set like I want to I want to set override a specific value. I want to overwrite this value here. So usually you do user the occupation the skill set sub zero equals this. But what if you know this does not exist? You know, like you don't want to throw error on setting on something that does not exist. So we use sets to do a safe setting of values. So all you have to do is you call set and then you pass in the object you want to manipulate, and then we do occupation the skill sets sub zero equals I don't know Ruby so if I console log user it should update to you see like that part here this part here is now updated to Ruby so that's very easy you simply specify how you will like go in to this nested array and set the value um, the other part that I like about set is that you can add new values to a to an object without worry about you know errors so let's say I want to you know add an extra value to hmm, let's say user I want to do user dot occupation dot responsibilities and then I want to set that value to be like an array of, you know, documentation, tests, you know, whatever else this person does. So notice that the second 
parameter is now an, an array, this makes it go nest like go in instead of having a string, you can you can also do this to make it go deep into a nested object and set a specific value. So if I do this right now, so as you can see it added a responsibilities value to the occupation objects. So it's very simple and again the reason I use these helper functions is that I don't have to do all those error checkings and it makes my code a lot easier to read and understand. So yeah, I hope you you enjoy this little tutorial and you know, just start using get and set in your projects. So I'll see you guys next time. This video was brought to you by DigitalOcean, the best cloud computing service designed for developers. Start your private server in as little as one minute. Choose from wide selection of preview images such as Node, LAMP, Docker, and WordPress, hosted on multiple regions around the world. Use the link in the description below to get $10 off when you sign up. I'll see you in the next video.